We play and call it work. Scenario four, crossing the dry river. Glory be to the chapter. I never thought I'd say this, but it was the brothers who saved us when the army commanders at Verdun and Riggers lost their heads. One of the most talented chapter leaders, Magnus the Daring, came straight from Eldhain with his knights, their armor still splattered with blood. Magnus took over command. He forged a plan. From that moment, we began to hinder the enemy assault, waiting for more reinforcements to come from all the cities and for the streams of refugees to reach the rear. As our main line of defense, we chose the bed of the dry river, whose high banks, stretching for over a hundred miles from the west to the southeast, formed a natural wall. Now I am standing on top of them, watching the approaching enemies below. The demons have been concentrating their forces here since yesterday. I can clearly see they will attempt to break through. They are carrying ladders of human bone and long ropes with iron hooks. But behind me gleam rows of rangers' crossbows. If any of these beasts reaches the top, we are ready to push it back. Kovar O'Hare, 4th Sharpshooter Battalion, Veridan. My beautiful and harsh mistress, we are ready for the final frontal attack. I understand how frustrated you and the other Primes are by the fact that after a promising start, this offensive got stuck at the line of this darn dried out river. But I promise these pitiful humans won't stop us for long. We have a few surprises that will help us overrun their positions on the other shore. And when we do that, when we break through their defenses, we shall roll through their lands like an iron avalanche. I hope that when all this is accomplished, you allow me to stand before your fearful majesty and hear your voice once more. Welcome to Scenario 4, Crossing the Dry River of the Edge Awakening. This will be the final game that we'll be playing for now. And if you want to check out the rest of the scenarios in the campaign, make sure you check out The Edge at Dawnfall. We'll put some links below to get some information on this game. And in this one, we're actually going to be departing from our usual heroes. And Scenario 4 kind of goes over and uh, looks at the progress of the main human versus demon armies. And so that's what we're going to be depicting here. So everything on the campaign map right now essentially isn't used. All the powers and forces. So I don't start with one less guy. You don't start with one more guy. And I don't, but I also don't get my banner. So that's, you know, would you exchange not having a guy for me not having the banner? Definitely. Yeah, yeah. I... I think you, yeah, yeah you, it's all good there. This scenario is going to be tough for me because it represents me trying to get to the top of the cliff. Our forces are as such. I have got a unit of bloodsmiths, there's three of them, a gore hound and a unit of dark scholars. You have a unit of rangers, pilgrims, and a holy knight. Me, the demon player, chooses one of the sides, long edges, to be the uh, top of the cliff. Now this is after we placed all our crystals and shrines. And I'm going to choose this side. I stuck my shrine right here. This shrine especially, you haven't seen it yet. Basically, if an enemy is in base contact with it and they take a wound, they take an extra wound. So, I, of course, my shrine just magically appears at the top of the cliff. And uh, it's a bad omen, clearly. And you start with your guys deployed here. And I start deployed within two spaces of the other edge. And I need to get four models. Basically, have at least four models at the top of the cliff at the end of any of your turns and I automatically win. And your job is to make sure that that doesn't happen by the end of turn seven, or just kill me down to three models, at which point it becomes impossible. But some things do happen mid-game, so we'll have to read those scripts as they come along. Also, there are some major nerfs to the demons in this. The chapter player gets an extra crystal. I only get two. On top of that, simply activating a squad because I'm heading up the cliff makes me really tired. So I can either spend a crystal or an endurance in order to activate a squad. So I have less crystals and I have to use them for the basic movement. So that's going to nerf me a little bit there. Don't know what you're doing there. Git. And, uh, but we'll see, we'll see. I also have a special bomb in my Dark Scholars that I can always kill a Dark Scholar and make it so you can't shoot in the following turn. But that's assuming you have a shoot card. And on top of that, if two models are fighting, whoever is closer to the top of the cliff, gets plus one initiative. So that will definitely be important for a lot of guys. Are you ready? Let's do this! In this one I've got to start deploying first and Rob gets to go first. And we are deployed. Obviously I went as far forward as I could and you deployed on your cliff. Now because you get first turn I get a cho to choose a squad and take a free move. Let me think about that for a second. For my free move, I'm going to move my scholars here, here, and here, grabbing some crystal sources. You've got first turn. You want active or passive? I am active. Of course. 
I'm activating my rangers. Taking my card, because it costs nothing to flip it over. So you're going to change their mode to aim mode. Yes. So they lose any ability to attack or move. Their defense goes from plus two to plus zero. Their initiative drops to zero, which wouldn't matter anyways, because they can't attack. But there's a certain card that he has that lets them shoot if they're in aim mode. And then? I'm going to play, it costs zero crystals. Shoot! With any rangers in squad, at any one target model, range unlimited, line of fire required. Line of fire, this is the first time we're actually seeing it, is basically traced in a straight line using this basis. So this guy can fire straight line at the Gorehound. This guy will not have any targets because it's blocked by the crystal. So he gets one shot. It's the same as any combat. He rolls an attack die versus my defense, and except I don't get to hit him back. And you get plus two to the roll. Did you want to use a crystal to make it a red die? No, I'm not going to use my crystals just yet. You got a plus two anyways, right? Against yes. my plus one defense. Go for it. Here goes. No. So that is a two in total. Two. So I have to roll one or higher. I am not going to use a crystal. You're doing zero. I need to roll one. Three. Ah. Nothing happens. Anything else? No, nothing else. So at the end of my turn, I'm just replenishing my supply to three cards. Okay. I'm going to play a passive turn. Collect three crystals. These crystals are going to be incredibly important to me, so I need to start with a lot of them. And since it starts me with less than the chapter player, I gotta spend a turn doing this, and that'll bring us to turn number two. Active or passive? I'm going to go active again. I'm going to activate my pilgrims and just move up to contest this crystal. Yeah, pilgrim. So each of them can move two spaces. None of them will be able to get in base contact with that scholar. No. Just remember, they don't have to stay together. Yes. I'm not saying that they shouldn't stay together, because obviously they... I, they work better, and I'll just keep them there. Any cards you want to spend? No cards to spend, and that ends my turn. Do you want to discard a card? Or do you like them well enough? I think I'm going to discard a card. And then draw a new one. Draw a new one. I will take an active turn. I'm going to spend one crystal to teleport one demon model. I wish it was one demon squad. That would be very powerful. The Gorehound is going to teleport onto this guy right here and push him next to the Demon Shrine. I'm going to spend one crystal to activate him. Remember, normally you don't have to spend a crystal to activate him. Oh wait, I threw the crystal away. That goes there. Spend a crystal to activate him. Normally you don't have to do that, but that's a special rule for the demons. I will then not move. I'm happy where I am. And I will attack this one. You've got a plus zero defense right now and i got a plus three. Do you have a dodge or anything? I do have a dodge! Okay, so that's two crystals. Let's see it. Let's see it. Let's remind the audience. Dodge, two crystals. After you enter combat, reposition that model to any adjacent space and cancel the combat. So go ahead. It's just this guy that can move. This guy here. Any adjacent space. So it'll have to be this one or actually any of those three. Yeah. I'm and then cancel combat. Right there. So even though you're in base contact, you still cancel the yes. combat. Okay. I'm going to spend two crystals on Infernal Power. This changes the mode of my Bloodsmith because he cannot do it for free. You'll notice there's no little arrow thing on him. Notice 2312 two becomes 3424 four on all three of my bloodsmiths. They are now ridiculously powerful and very fast. Very scary. And then I'm gonna discard my last card. I don't really want it. And then draw three cards, and that is the end of my turn two. Turn three. Active or passive? I'm going to go active. What you gonna do first? I am going to do my uh, Holy Knight. I'm going to activate my Holy Knight. Activating this Holy Knight. What's and he going to do? He is going to move. He's got a, a, the move of two. So one, one two, two. And then he won't be able to attack? Nope. But I'm playing a card. It costs zero crystals and I can do a free move. Who's going to move? The Holy Knight. Okay. Let's back up a second. Why not do that first? Do the move and then move again. So you can attack. Yes. Because this move doesn't let you attack. But when you activate him, he can attack. Yes, that's so right. Would you like to reverse that order? Yes, rewind a bit. Okay. <laughs> what would you like to do, Rob? I'm going to do what you said and kill that... What uh, I said? I haven't said it yet because we just rewound. All right, anyway, so you move with the card. <laughs> yeah. And then go ahead and move him again and attack. Yeah. That's, that's more like it. There we that go. That makes more sense. Yes. 
You got a plus one attack versus my plus one defense. Do you want to use a yellow or a red die? You got one crystal left. Do you know what? I'm gonna boost it. I'm gonna boost it. Okay, do it. It's last game. Do it. Eey. So I gotta roll five or higher. Um. 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 Yeah, I'll boost it. I'll use my last crystal, so I gotta roll five or higher. One. So you take off his endurance. So they now the dark scholars have no endurance. Any other cards? Sure. No, I have no more cards to play, so I just redraw. Pick up, and I'm done. Okay, in turn three, I'm supposed to gain an extra Dark Scholar Squad and place it within five squares, or five spaces over there, of the other side. All the way around, no closer than within five spaces, so I have to be back here. I'm gonna place them there in all their unpainted glory. Models still look great, but they look even better painted. In my turn, I'm gonna go passive. I'm only gonna collect crystals from this one, but I get my five back which I think is going to be very important. So I'll have six crystals now. In turn four, we're supposed to read a script. I sure hope it's to benefit me and not you. I hope to Oh, to be honest, you're starting to get outnumbered. Yes. The sound of a horn rolled over the battlefield. The sharpshooters of Veridin froze, hearing the signal they remembered well from their training. Their surprise commander looked to the hill where the army banner and Magnus Adarian stood. This had to be a mistake, an illusion spawned by the demons. The signal meant retreat. However, giving up the top of the cliff now would make little sense. But what if the signal was real? Chaos grows among the human forces. From now on, activating any chapter unit requires spending a crystal or sacrificing an endurance. So we both have that penalty now. I don't like that penalty. Yeah. Active or passive? You're out of crystal, so you'll have to spend endurance to activate units. I'm doing active. Oh, ho, ho. screw defense. Offense is the best defense. That's right. So, uh. I'm taking one of my endurance off my holy knight. Ouch. Uh, he strains his brain. And what's he going to do? Uh, I'm just going to just attack. Okay. Now, last. Hey, last round when you didn't hurt him, I should have hit you back. I forgot to do the counter attack. So let me just quickly roll my attack from the one before because that might change your mind whether you want to spend an endurance. Okay. So I'll just throw this quick attack. This is from your last turn. So I have plus zero. So three <laughs> against your plus two defense. So you guys got to roll two or higher. Four. Four. Okay, so it didn't matter. Okay. So now we're on to this turn. Now normally my initiative is higher than yours. I have a two and you're a one. So this is another thing we forgot last turn. But since you're closer to the top of the cliff, you get plus one initiative because we're yes. kind of on a slope. And so you still get to hit me first. So it's the same initiative, but it's your turn. So go ahead. Attack. Plus one? No. Um, I can't fail that, because I got a plus one defense. So I get to hit you back, and you can't fail that. Nope. So we're just kind of looking at each other. Hey, how's it going? It's a standoff. Any other cards to spend? I think I'm going to just discard a card and pick up another one in my turn. You're in trouble, man. I know. In my turn, I'm going I'm to use this card. Zero, move with all models in one demon squad. This doesn't cost a crystal. It's going to be the um, bloodsmiths. So one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. They don't get to attack. That's just a move. I'm going to place this rush card. The gorehound gets a free backstab. So this is not initiating combat. Or, sorry, this is... Yeah, well, I just get a free backstab. I don't have to activate him is what I'm trying to say. A backstab is an attack, but you don't get to attack back. So I'm going to attack the one. It doesn't really matter which one, because you still have endurance on them. Mm -hmm. You're still in aim mode, so you only have plus zero defense. So I'm going to stick with the yellow die. So that is a five total. So unless you're going to spend an endurance to be able to roll a red die, because you can spend an endurance instead of a, a crystal, I will take that endurance off of you. Uh, just take the endurance off. Just okay. do it. Well, you take it off. <laughs> Boom! I will then spend one crystal to activate the bloodsmiths. Sorry, I keep putting the crystals off to the side. They're still mine, just in the used pile. They will then move to here. And all three will attack. And now I have four models on your wall. So if at the end of your following turn, you, um, I still have those four, but you're forgetting that the pile of uh, archers that are behind I you. know, right? 
That's, that's, there's a script in turn five. Yeah. Uh, every model on the wall takes one wound. <laughs> Yeah, friend and foe. Yeah, I mean, friend, just, friend, just, no, no, just friend and foe. Do you know what? At this point, friend and foe, right? Yeah. It is just great. They're all dead. Collapse the wall. It was a trap. Uh, can you imagine the scenario being like that on turn six? It's a trap. The wall is actually on the other side. <laughs> can you imagine? Oh, so many ideas for scenarios now. Yeah. I'm going to attack first with the one in the back. And you, they, these guys don't get to attack back because in aim mode, they have no attack. That's right. And I have a plus four. So you're hoping I roll a zero, so you can roll a four. Yep. Like, holy cow. So I'm not even gonna bother spending crystals for this. First one. Well, there's a zero. Can you roll a four? Or you can spend an endurance on the pilgrims. I am spending an endurance on the pilgrims. <laughs> to roll the red die instead. Six! Okay, you stopped the first one. The second one will attack. Okay, screw it, I'm spending crystals. Plus four. Six! So you'd have to spend an endurance on the Holy Knight and then roll a six on the red die. Mm-hmm. Ah! Yes. Oh, you did it! Yes! How are you doing it? Okay, one more. And you don't have any more no, endurance. I don't. Eight! So he's dead. Oh, sorry, that last one was this guy, so he's dead. Yeah, that hurt a lot. Except that, yeah, hurt, I guess, I guess inadvertently I hurt your entire army. Yeah. Yay, me! I'm gonna play this card at the end of my turn. Exchange one demon endurance. So I'm gonna hurt the dark scholars that just arrived, so you're free to go and kill them. And I get two temporary crystals. That's the end of my turn, so I draw three more cards. Turn five. I think this is an automatic loss. You don't have any crystals nope. or endurance. Nope. Do you have any cards that can help you here? Because you have to do a passive turn to get your crystals back. Yeah. But I have four guys in the top of your cliff. Yeah. Yeah. So I think I just won. Um. Yep. <laughs> Peace out. <laughs> That's it. But even if you did have crystals, what would you do? How would you kill one of these guys? They both still have endurance on them, so you actually have to do two damage yeah, to them, which means only the pilgrims could do it. But the pilgrims all the way over here, you could put the pilgrims in run mode, and this guy can one, two, three. But then only the one of them would get to guy. And that just wouldn't be enough, so you'd have to have cards. No. So, so you lost. Yep, that was a very quick game. Yeah, okay, well, good game. Let's read what happens. Silver lining, there is a special penalty if all your rangers were killed. And since the game does end at the end of your turn where I have four guys, that last ranger was not killed. So if I had killed both those rangers, we would be reading an extra script for the penalty. So you place sticker A16B in this slot, which is a demon victory. So that'll probably have some sort of effect later on in the campaign. And then I read script number 41. The horn sounded once more along the length of the river. We stopped in half stride, sweaty and covered in blood. Retreat? No one expected that. The demons had gained only a few small footholds at the top. Whatever. Hey, no, I did better than that. We still could push them down. Nah. But the signal repeated a third time. This time there could be no doubt. I ordered my people to retreat under the covering fire of our crossbows. An order is an order. I take a final look at the plains on both sides of the river. I can't believe we're simply giving them to the demons. I'd hate to be in the shoes of anyone still outside the walls of a refuge. Play scenario six. Ooh. That's it. Yes. But we're not going to be playing that right now. No. This is the end of our showcase of this campaign. So if you want to find out what happens in this campaign, you've got to get your hands on this game somehow. Information on it is in the link below. Let us know your comments, what you think. We'd love to hear them. And thank you to Awaken Realms for allowing us to showcase your game. It's been fun. And uh, you won two games, I won two games. We're tied. Yeah, this last scenario, jeez. That was the fastest scenario. Actually, the one before, that. well, the test game that we played was even faster because you just completely obliterate my team. Yeah, yeah. Both sides seem to have some really good strengths. Yep. And uh, your your defensive abilities like dodging and things like that are and running and flying you can really pick your battles whereas I just hit like a ton of bricks over and over again yeah it's uh, it's an interesting it's it's really interesting how it all works out so thank you so much for watching I hope that you enjoyed this playthrough of the first few scenarios of the Edge Dawnfall chapter versus Demons campaign make sure you check out Awaken Realms and the Edge at the links below and see. You know, just, just check it out. Go get the game. Play the game. Have some fun. And happy wargaming.